Now this brings us to a very famous and regularly misunderstood figure. And this is one of many prehistoric Venus figurines that we find. Here's another image of them. And you see there's a great deal of variation with them. The piece we're looking at is actually the Venus of Willendorf. Now, the problem is, why do we call her a Venus? After all, she looks nothing like a razor. Well, we call her a Venus because when she was found, the term Venus would be applied to any nude female form because it was assumed that since the Greeks would only depict nude females or only depict Venus as a nude female, that could be applied somehow to these other figures. So Venus is a misnomer. It's a misunderstanding of the figure. More properly termed, it would be a fertility symbol of some form possibly. Now she's carved of limestone which is very easy to carve and very common at the time. And she would be colored with red ochre, which is basically rust. Uh, they would mix it with water or chew a little bit of it in their mouths, mixing it with saliva, and then apply it to the surface with their hands or sort of blowing it out of their mouths. Now, this Venus can be problematic. And the problem comes in when we try and interpret it. There are a couple of current theories out there of what we're seeing. One is that this is actually a pregnant woman sculpting herself, looking down. It would explain why there's no face. It would also explain the accentuation of certain symbols, the large breasts, the round belly. Because you can imagine her looking down her body trying to do this uh, sort of self-portrait. It's also possible as a fertility symbol, and remember fertility symbols for human fertility frequently also apply to things like crops or fertility in the hunt. It's possible that they're simply accentuating those aspects that they recognize as tied to fertility, large breasts, higher body fat percentage, etc. Because if a woman has too low has body fat that's too low, uh, she won't be able to reproduce. And we do this today. Uh, we do this if you look at any magazine, for example, we're constantly accentuating very similar features in women uh, to give us that same sense of fertility that people tend to be attracted to. Now, they're not always this shape these fertility symbols could be any number of different forms, but they do tend to accentuate the hips and the breasts. Again, those uh, symbols of human fertility. And also, you have to keep in mind, at the time, pregnancy is quite a mystery to them. Even up until the 19th century, many people had a complete misunderstanding of how women got pregnant. They don't know why sometimes intercourse results in nothing and sometimes it results in pregnancy. So all of these mysteries brought together kind of give us some idea of why she was created. Now, the Venus of Willendorf also does not have a face. A couple of different explanations. It could be a self-portrait. You can't see your own face without a mirror and they don't have those. It's also possible that the face is the hardest part to sculpt, just like the hands, which are just barely cut in above the breasts. So they simply get rid of the face and ignore the idea of carving the face, as we see with these two other forms on the right. It is not that beanie caps were particularly popular at the time, as sheep had yet to give up wool and teach us that their wool will shrink over time. I might be making that up too. Now we have other forms as well. This is another Venus form. This is a woman holding a bison horn and this is a relief sculpture. So instead of sculpture in the round, which is what we see here, which means that it's carved all the way around, or if you want to think about it this way, you could walk around it. Even though the Venus is very, very small, it'd be a short trip. This is a relief sculpture, so the stone backing is still attached to the sculpture. 
It's not been freed completely from the stone. And what we see here is this woman with a bison horn. Now, we don't know why she's holding the bison horn. It could be a religious symbol. It could have to do with the hunt. It could have to do with a lot of things. There's a lot of mysticism at the time. Where did these animals go when they're not around us, when we can't see them and hunt them? This also would have been painted. In fact, almost every sculpture we see from now till the Renaissance was painted at one time, including the cathedrals, the great Gothic cathedrals. And she has a lot of similarities to the Venus of Willendorf. Again, we have that accentuation of the breasts, the hips, the belly. So this leads us to believe that she's some kind of fertility symbol. Now, this does not mean that she reflects what people looked like at the time. It could be that uh, sense of accentuation. We just haven't found any evidence of, of uh, similar looking people at the time. Now, this could be interpreted a number of different ways. Most scholars will interpret this as that fertility symbol. The horn probably tied to the hunt. So in other words, instead of fertility for crops or fertility for humans, it could be tied to fertility for the hunt, keeping those herds up so that they are plentiful. And context becomes very important. This has been removed from the cave that it was originally found in, which means we lose the context, the surroundings. We don't know what else was around her at the time, which does make museums rather tricky to deal with when we're dealing with art history because we don't know if maybe there were paintings of bison on either side. That could really help our understanding. We don't know what else was there. Maybe there's broken sculptures that were found around her. We just don't know.